Sony ZV-1. Here's the Sony ZV-1. I've had this for a few months now. I wanted to really use this camera uh, before I m did a mini review here. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about, oh, roughly around eight things that I really like about this camera. Not really that many negative things. I might name a few along the way. And then at the end of this video, I'll, I have some test footage that I took in Joshua Tree, California. The things I like about this camera, First off is the similarities to the RX100 series. I used to have an RX100, the very first one, and then I had an RX100 Mark III. I, I haven't updated to the other iterations because those RX cameras usually started at around $1,000. And even the used ones, they're still within $600, $800. And I don't think, I, I, I'm not that precious with those pocket cameras. I don't wanna pay that premium for it. If you're familiar with the RX100 series, the ZV-1 functions very similar, although the body is a lot cheaper. This is all plastic. It's not heavy. If you drop this, it does feel like it's gonna shatter in a million pieces, whereas the RX100s felt like they were all built like tanks. The benefit of the RX100 series, the, the similarities is that they share the same batteries. So if you have batteries from the any of the RX100 series, they all have the same batteries, as far as I know. The, maybe the latest ones have a different one, but the, from the Mark I all the way to the Mark V, Mark VI, they all had these kind of batteries. And I even had some third-party batteries I got on Amazon that, that work. And I got the official Sony charger. I made a video on this Sony charger. I'll link that below, uh, just a review of it. And if you have an uh, RX100 camera or the ZV-1, you should just get this charger. It, it's worth it. Otherwise, you're gonna have to charge the batteries uh, using the U micro USB, and you have to charge the battery in the camera. And this one, I think, was 50 bucks, and you get this and, and an extra battery for 50 bucks. And it's been around forever, since the RX100 series. So you, you might even be able to find this used because they've been around for so long. The other thing I like about uh, this, the the similarities from the RX100 to the ZV-1 is that it maintains a one inch, 20 megapixel, 20.1 megapixel one inch XMR sensor, which is if you have other Sony one inch cameras, it's pretty good. It even matches my Canon XF400. The Canon XF400 is a big prosumer type of camcorder with a one inch sensor. This small guy, also has a one inch sensor. So it's better in low light than the point and shoots generally are because of the one inch sensor. And it's just like the other RX 100s. The other thing I like is that from about the RX 100 Mark V, I think they sw swapped once it went to the R uh, Mark VI and seven, but you have a 24 to 70 F 1.8 to 2.8 zoom lens. This stops down all the way to f11. So it doesn't stop down all the way. You can't go to f22 or even f16. However, it has internal ND filters. So you can swap an in internal ND filter on if you're shooting video and maintain a, a low, sh you know, a regular shutter speed. So if you're shooting 24, you can have a 150th. And if you're shooting 30p like I generally shoot, you get a 160th. Now some of the differences between the RX100 series and this ZV-1, besides it being all plastic and a little flimsy, it is lighter, so that's a bit of a benefit. And they also have a flippy screen, a three inch flippy screen that you can do selfie modes on the side, which I, I prefer this type of screen compared to the, the, the flip up screen of the, uh, all the RX 100s and then even the G7X Mark IIs and threes, it flips up like this. I don't really like this style. I prefer this one because it's more of a traditional video type of video camera flip. I'm more used to that. Some people like this better. I like this better. And it's also a touch screen, but only really to focus. You can't go through the menus on a touch on this touch screen, but you can do autofocus, which is fantastic on this camera. It is far superior in autofocus to the G7X Mark II and III. 
the, the, it has eye autofocus, so it can lock onto your eye. It's a hybrid system of, I think it's 315 phase detection points. And like I said, touch focus. So if you're pointing it at yourself, you can just touch your face and it'll lock on and it'll stay on you. It's also really good with a, a macro focusing. So it has a feature here where you've probably seen it advertised. If you're a YouTuber and you're showing products, you're, re you're reviewing a product like this and you're, show you're putting it up right up to the, uh, right up to the lens, not on this camera, because this one's not as, the lens I'm using isn't as precise. But with this one, when you enable that feature, you can hold something right to the lens. It locks on really smoothly, and then you can put it away and it goes back to your, your face. The next thing I really like about this camera are the codecs and the picture profiles. The file format is XAVCS. You can do XAVCS 4K from 23.97, all the way up to 29.97. So 24p to 30p, and it shoots it at 100 megabits. Then you can also do HD at XAVCS at 23.98, all the way up to 120p. Yep, you can do 120p at 100 megabits. This is packed with almost, it seems like it has all of Sony's picture profiles, which I'm very impressed with. When you go down here, you can select up to, I think my favorite ones are Cine 1 and 2. Then you have S-Log 2 and S-Log 3. So you can shoot log. It's only 8-bit, not 10-bit 422. It's only, I think, 420 8-bit but you still get log if you're in the right se uh, right setting to use log. You can have log two and log three, and you could match the ZV-1 if you have other Sony cameras, and you might be able to match it if you if you have a Panasonic or Canon cameras. I also like the HL HGL settings, but the setting I'm primarily shooting this is just the regular movie mode. That's when I don't want to fuss about with the image. I don't want to shoot log. I don't want to play around. If I'm just shooting like a review video like I am now, I don't want to mess with the settings. I just want it to look good right out of the camera. And when you use the first picture profile movie mode, which is this one, it's just PP1. Once I select that mode, I'm good to go. And the past two months, all of the videos that I've been shooting on this YouTube channel, I've been using the ZV-1. So you can just go back and see other of my recent videos and just see the quality of what the ZV-1 looks like right out of the camera. Then the last thing I really love about the ZV-1 is the audio features. You have full manual control over the audio, so you can dial it in. You have wind attenuation, so if you're in a windy environment. But this camera right here has upgraded the microphones from the RX100 series. So you have a directional microphone right here that sounds pretty good right out of the box, but when you're in windy environments, you have a multi-shoe here. It comes with this windscreen that you connect right over into the shoe, and then you have a wind muff here that blocks the wind. So if you're out vlogging or if you wanna capture audio and you don't want the wind on the audio and camera, you can use it just like this, and it works pretty well. It's not as good, I would say, it doesn't have the, the quality of the G7X Mark III and the Mark II. So I will give the Canon more credit in its audio. The audio built in, the audio mics built into the G7X Mark II and III, I felt had more bass, had more presence, and I preferred that better. But Sony gives you a little bit more features in the menu system to do more with the audio. And it gives you this uh, windscreen here. You also get a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack right there that you don't have a headphone jack, but this mic jack is awesome to use there, an external mic. You know, the uh, hot shoe right here also can accept Sony's mics, but I've been doing a little research online on, on what else you could put into this port right here. On the camcorders and the higher end mirrorless and DSLR cameras, you can use this port to put in a more advanced shotgun microphone, even an EVF and uh, a, an XLR adapter. 
but from what I've been researching, not a lot of those external, the extra hot shoe connection uh, devices work on the ZV-1. For example, the EVF does not work on this, and I think one of the higher end microphones does not work on this. So you have to really check on what actually works on this uh, hot shoe, the propri Sony's proprietary hot shoe mount. But you have the analog 3.5 millimeter, so a lot of people will use a shotgun microphone like this Rode Micro, and you and you attach the micro right here on their cold shoe mount, hot shoe cold shoe mount, and then plug it in. Yeah, it looks a little strange because all of these ports are on the right side, where you would probably want it on the left side, but you wouldn't be able to flip the LCD 360 if all of the ports were on this side. There just was there's not enough room. So I understand why the ports are here. It's kind of annoying, but it works. But what you could do, what I've been doing on recording better audio is I've been using this mic right here. This is an Edutage, Edutage ETM-001. And I just plug this right in to the side here. And I did an entire video reviewing this microphone with this camera. I'll link that below so you can just listen to the audio samples that I've already done and compare this to other mics such as the Rode Video Micro. But this is how I roll, this is how I use it. And this is such a powerful mic, it's an omnidirectional. So it, it looks like it's, oh, you know, do, do you have to go right up, right to the microphone for it to, it's for you to hear it? Or, or is it only directional pointing this way? No, you could hear it all the way around. So when you're in a quieter environment, and I just plug it in here, and I'm doing these review videos like I am now. I plug it in right there, it picks up way better audio than the onboard audio, even though the onboard audio mics are pretty good. I just plug it in like this, and I dial the, uh, the manual audio all the way down to number one or number two, and I just roll with it, and it seems to be pretty good for, for what I'm getting. And this is a fairly cheap microphone, this is not, this is not a hundred dollars. It's not fifty bucks. I think it was, I don't know, thirty, thirty-nine dollars. I'll put a link below where you can just purchase this mic. And if you're curious of getting a sound sample, I, I'll leave my review of this mic below where I test this with with the ZV1. Finally, there's just a couple other features that I uh, am aware about with this camera that I'm I'm thinking about using, but I haven't used yet, and that all involves the mini USB port. The mini USB port you can use to charge the battery in the camera, but you can also use it to run the camera continuously. So you still need to pop the battery in, but once you plug this in to a, a power bank or just an external, like a, a USB with a, an AC wall, or, or you can plug it directly into your computer, whatever gives it power through USB, you could power this camera continuously and I uh, with, with just that cable. So you don't need like a dummy battery. You don't need anything like that. It all works with a micro USB. Also, Sony had released an app uh, on their website that can con uh, make this into a webcam. I have played around with their, with their app and I tried to use this camera as a webcam, but it doesn't work with a lot of, a lot of app, other apps. I've had success on OBS, and, but it, do, it doesn't transfer audio, it's only video. And I, I've I had success on OBS, but I can't use this on Zoom, Skype, FaceTime. I, I'm an Apple user, so like any of those Apple apps, e even as a webcam uh, for the uh, using QuickTime, sometimes you can just open up QuickTime and then enable uh, a webcam to show up. It doesn't work on that. So it's very limited, uh, unless you, it's all about OBS for you, I wouldn't trust their, their webcam app just yet. It, it, I think it's their first release of the app, so maybe as they fix it up, it, it'll work. Uh, but it does have an HDMI, a micro HDMI, so you could use their micro HDMI, and if you had something like a cam link here, you could convert an HDMI into USB and then use that to stream and this should carry over audio as well. If you're using an external recorder, the micro HDMI does do clean, 
clean 4K 422 out, which uh, that's pretty cool. So you, you, you can use this, it could punch well above its weight by doing the uh, 422 out. The ZV-1 has an unlimited video record time. A lot of the other cameras, including the Canon G7X Mark II and III, they cap you off at 29 minutes. But with the ZV-1, there's no limitation for recording. And when I first took this out of the box and hit record, it, I did get an overheating notification on the camera and there was a limitation of how long I could record. And that kind of bummed me out. It, was, it, it seemed like it was false advertising like the G7X Mark III where I, once I used it, it shut down. But there is actually a feature in the menu system where you can disable an overheating warning. And then once I disabled the overheating warning, it never overheated or shut, shut off on me again. I don't know if that's uh, a, a workaround where it's actually affecting, it's, it's, it, it does get, the camera does get warm when you're shooting 4K for a long time. And I'm just wondering oh, if I shoot for a year with unlimited record time, will that burn up some internals? I'm not sure yet, but Sony does give you unlimited record time in all of the modes, in, in, in the uh, higher 4K modes which the other cameras don't do. So that's what I really like about the ZV-1. I'm really happy that I purchased it. It's a great piece of gear. Um, I, I also use it in addition to these smaller like uh, review videos. I've done, I have taken this out on jobs where I'm using DSLRs or bigger cinema cameras and I use this as B-roll or whenever I'm out and about and I just carry this with me at all times and I wanna just capture something better than I can on my phone. I whip this camera out, I get higher quality video, I have a lot of manual control, and I could intercut this with my bigger cameras. So now I'm gonna show some test footage uh, that I shot with this camera in Joshua Tree. <laughs> 